Okay, let's talk today about something called brain fog. Brain fog, a lot of the people that were uh, infected with the COVID-19 virus, or more specifically the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID, a lot of them developed a condition called long COVID in which the disease seems to linger on interminably after the initial, let's say, infection kind of dissipates. They get symptoms that last that could last interminably, like it just goes on and on. And one of the more common symptoms is brain fog. But you don't have to have COVID, you don't have to have been infected by COVID-19 to be affected by brain fog. Brain fog is basically kind of fuzzy thinking. It's characterized by symptoms such as confusion, forgetfulness, difficulty concentrating. Those are all symptoms of brain fog. It can be caused by a number of conditions. It could be caused by hormone problems, chronic stress. If you're under a lot of stress, you could slip into brain fog. Lack of sleep is probably the most common cause of brain fog. Uh, so let's look at some of the uh, possible causes. Uh, you know, again, the typical symptoms of brain fog, difficulty concentrating, forgetfulness, confusion, uh, lack of mental clarity, sluggish thinking, being easily distracted, uh, finding it difficult to put your thoughts into words. Uh, uh, those are... Uh, you know, it also could be related to a low-level chronic inflammation in the brain, which could be caused by a number of factors. But um, even, let's talk about from a nutritional point of view, uh, if you're, let's say, on a very low-calorie diet and you're not getting enough uh, nutrition, if your brain is not getting enough fuel, let's say it's not getting enough glucose, and not getting enough nutrients, that can affect cognitive or thinking function and can cause brain fog. Uh, there was, um, you know, there's a uh, um, one review looked at the possible nutrients that can cause uh, uh, brain fog, and among them were a lack of polyunsaturated fats, particularly omega-3 polyunsaturated fats, fatty acids such as found in in a fatty fish and or fish oil supplements. Uh, that alone can cause a type of a low-level brain inflammation, uh, which can uh, lead to brain fog. Uh, if you're lacking uh, enough, if you're not ingesting enough antioxidant foods, such as fruits and vegetables, that can cause oxidative stress and inflammation, which can also cause a type of brain fog. Not eating enough, again, if you're on an extremely restrictive diet, it can also cause depression and anxiety. Uh, depression, anxiety, um, were also related to brain fog. So that's another thing. Uh, what about specific nutrients? What nutrients are associated with brain fog? Again, uh, you know, vitamin D plays a key role in several aspects of health, including brain fog. I'm, so I'm sorry, brain function. Uh, Lack of vitamin D in a lot of individuals is linked to higher risk of depression. Again, depression is directly related to brain fog and memory problems. Uh, you know, the most common way to get vitamin D is to go in the sun. Unfortunately, the sun has to be in the right place in the sky to emit the, uh, a certain wavelength of UV or ultraviolet rays, which will stimulate the conversion of cholesterol in the skin into vitamin D. Uh, in certain latitudes in the winter, particularly up north, uh, the sun can be out, but it's not, uh, you're not getting the right wavelength of uh, UV wavelength. So you could stay out there for hours and you're not going to get any vitamin D from the sun. Uh, all other things that can affect the, affect the synthesis of vitamin D uh, from sunlight include uh, having darker skin makes it more difficult, being older makes it more difficult. Having a lot of body fat makes it more difficult because the vitamin D that's manufactured in the skin upon exposure to UV light, unfortunately, the, that vitamin D gets sequestered in body fat, so you're not getting qu quite as much body fat as you think. Um, there was a study of 42 older women who had low levels of vitamin D. They found that giving these women 2,000 units of vitamin D for a year uh, sh uh, they showed that the women sh displayed improvements and learning and memory tests compared to those who took either 600 or 4,000 units. 2,000 units a day is usually 
the average, re if you don't have a vitamin D deficiency, that's the usual recommended uh, dose of vitamin D to take in a supplemental form. The vitamin D supplement to take is vitamin D3. They're very small little capsules. They're very easy uh, and should always take it with um, a form of dietary fat because vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. You have to have fat to absorb the vitamin D. Uh, so th th that's vitamin D. Vitamin B12, another very important brain vitamin. In fact, they show that it, uh, a long-standing deficiency of vitamin B12, also called cobalamin, can actually shrink the brain. Uh, and that, of course, is not good for anything. It's not good for memory, intelligence. It's certainly not good for brain fog. Vitamin D is also in involved in DNA synthesis, red, belt, red, belt, red blood cell production, and also it's needed for the full function of the nervous system. Uh, if you if you um, if you uh, have a deficiency of vitamin D for five years or more, you can actually get spinal degeneration, and you can get a type of brain memory disturbance that looks like Alzheimer's disease. A lot of older people are walking around uh, where the diagnosis has been Alzheimer's. They don't actually have Alzheimer's. They have a vitamin, long-standing vitamin B12 deficiency. The reason older people are more prone to a vitamin B12 deficiency is that vitamin D requires a certain factor produced in the stomach called the intrinsic factor. The intrinsic factor is related to stomach acid. Uh, when you secrete stomach acid or hydrochloric acid, it activates the intrinsic factor. The intrinsic factor combines with vitamin B12, let's say, in food or a supplement, and it allows the vitamin B12 to be transported and absorbed in the body. Older people, a lot of people, older people, uh, their stomach shrinks, and they get what they call achlorhydria. They don't produce enough stomach acid, and as a result of that, they don't produce enough of the intrinsic factor so when they consume vitamin B12, it doesn't get absorbed and they could wind up getting a deficiency. That's a simple solution. Uh, you could take sublingual supplemental forms of B12, which bypass the, the uh, let's say, the uh, normal oral absorption route. You could, you know, you take these vitamin B12, stick them under your tongue. They're called sublingual, and you'll get, be able to absorb the B12. Of course, there's also the old standby vitamin B12 injections. Uh, so, uh, by the way, the notion that vitamin B12 increases energy is only true if you're deficient in vitamin B12. If you're not deficient in vitamin B12, taking a B12 shot is more or less a placebo effect if you feel like you're getting more energy from it. Uh, there was a study of 202 people who had cognitive impairment and low levels of vitamin B12 they found that giving these people B12 enhanced, cogni enhanced cognition or brain function in 84% of the participants, and they improved their scores on a, on a test that evaluates memory, language, and attention. Iron is another uh, nutrient that could be associated with brain fog. The most familiar uh, function of iron is in the production of uh, erythrocytes or red blood cells. Uh, iron is needed for uh, hemoglobin, which is a protein carried by red blood cells that delivers oxygen to cells. So if you're not get, if your cells are in, and your brain is not getting enough oxygen because of uh, let's say iron deficiency, you're going to get brain fog, which will lead to alterations in memory, attention, and behavior. Uh, iron status. Uh, one study showed that iron status was significantly associated with cognitive performance in children. Those with kids who had iron deficiency anemia were more likely to score low on, on um, iron uh, on, on mental function tests. Now, the truth is that men recirculate their iron. Women are more prone to iron deficiency because they lose blood each month through menstrual cycles. Men tend to recirculate iron. So if a man is eating, let's say, iron-containing foods like red meat, liver, these other things, the supplementation of iron is completely unnecessary unless, unless you have something like internal bleeding, which can cause an iron deficiency in men. But in normal circumstances, a man does not need to supplement with iron. As a matter of fact, it's best not to because iron, free iron or iron that's not bound to proteins in the blood, free iron 
is very reactive and can cause increased oxidation that's related to cardiovascular disease and also brain degeneration. So men do not need to take iron supplements unless through a blood test you're shown to be deficient in it. Now I mentioned omega-3 fatty acids found in fatty fish like mackerel, salmon, halibut, and several others. Uh, these are important because uh, the omega fatty acids, your brain is composed of 60% fat and almost a lot of it, 40% of it is omega-3 fatty acids, particularly one of them called DHA. DHA. Now, DHA is found to play an important role in memory function. As I said, it seems to have a, a role in helping to prevent depression. And by maintaining optimal levels of omega-3, you could do, go a long way towards improving short-term memory and preventing brain fog. How much omega-3? You want to aim for at least 2 grams a day. If you eat fish, uh, if you have a high-fat fish meal two to three times a week, you don't need to take a, fat, a, a, a fish oil supplement. If you don't eat fish at all, it's a good idea to take a fish oil supplement. What I recommend is the liquid forms because you'd have to take too many of the capsules. Uh, you'd have to take 10, 15 capsules to get 2 grams of uh, of, uh, of omega-3, whereas with the uh, liquid form, it comes out to something like a, maybe a, a two teaspoons or a tablespoon. However, once you open up a liquid fish oil, make sure you refrigerate, refrigerate it immediately because fish oil is extremely prone to oxidation. It can go rancid if you leave it at room temperature. There's other nutrients that could uh, help prevent brain fog, magnesium. Magnesium uh, improves cognitive function. Uh, there's one particular magnesium that's a particularly useful for brain function. It's called magnesium theonate. It's sold as MAGTEIN, M-A-G-T-E-I-M. Now, it's a little bit more expensive than other ma magnesium supplements. However, of all the magnesium supplements, this is the, the form of magnesium that has the greatest entry into the brain, and it affects uh, energy production in the brain, such as ATP, Maximal energy production in the brain will, will definitely help prevent brain fog. Vitamin C is also important to uh, preventing brain fog. Uh, if, you, if you're not e eating fruits and vegetables, it's a good idea to get um, vitamin C. I saw a recent video. It was made by a doctor. He was saying uh, that vitamin D uh, in any doses over 90 milligrams is dangerous. That's complete bullshit. Uh, the, a lot of the uh, the uh, criticisms of vitamin C, such as that it causes uh, kidney stones, is simply not true. So uh, I don't think you need to take massive amounts of vitamin C. I myself, I take about 1,000 milligrams a day. I take 500 milligrams twice a day. I've never had any problem. Uh, and a, a, another nutrient that's great for brain, preventing brain fog is choline. Choline is needed because it's, uh, it forms, uh, it's needed for the formation of of an important brain neuro neurotransmitter involved in memory and intelligence functions called acetylcholine. So you want to take uh, with with choline about a thousand milligrams a day. The preferred form is um, is uh, what the hell is it called again? Um, <laughs> I can't even remember. Honestly, I'm having a little brain fog myself. Anyway, there's a certain form of choline uh, uh, that I uh, uh, can't remember the name of it. But it gets into the brain better than other forms. The standard forms of choline don't even enter the brain that much. So uh, you can get brain fog because of certain, certain hormonal changes that occur during pregnancy, even during menopause when estrogen gets too low. As I said, not getting enough sleep, chronic stress, uh, certain medications, certain conditions such as anxiety, high, low thyroid output, COVID-19. Of course, degenerative brain conditions uh, and, and that type of thing. So I think that about covers uh, what you need to know about brain fog and how to deal with it. Uh, uh, gee, I can't remember. What the hell is it? Hold on a second. I, I got to look this up while I'm making the video. Hold on. I got to give you the, the name, the right name of that uh, supplement for, uh, form of choline because it is important to see. Hold on a second. I can't end this without uh, giving you the right name. Let me see what it's called. Well, citicoline is one form. Citicoline can enter the brain. Phosphatidylcholine, also known as lecithin. Uh, and uh, let me see. Uh, that's not the one I'm thinking. Oh, alpha-GPC. There we go. 
Alpha GPC, that's the one I was trying to think of. Alpha GPC is, I think, personally, from all the research I've done, that's the best form of choline for entry into the brain. If you use any type of uh, brain-stimulating supplements like paracetam or any of the racetams, very important to take alpha GPC with them because uh, otherwise, if you take these uh, brain-stimulating supplements, you'll get a whopping headache. It has to do with a, de a decrease of um, uh, acetylcholine caused by using these uh, supplements. But if you take uh, alpha GPC, it prevents that effect. So that's about it for this uh, subject of brain fog. If you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, supplements that really work, I'll, I'll, I, I don't, I'm not associated with any supplement company, so I'll give you the whole truth about food supplements. Uh, as I said, er er ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, uh, uh, what, what else? Uh, 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 women's health and fitness. Applied Metabolics, that's my publication. It's www.appliedmetabolics.com. I cover more topics in Applied Metabolics than any other digital publication. It's 30 to 50 pages every month, no ads. And it, it not only does it have the most current evidence-based information, but it also includes my over 60 years of constant study and experience, which cannot be matched by anyone else, no matter what you see or hear or read. Applied Metabolics has material in it that you won't find on, on, on other, other sources in the internet. There's a lot of off-the-road stuff that's all of very practical use that can, you, you can use in your life. It'll improve your life. It'll improve your training progress and improve your health. So subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Excuse me. When you subscribe, send me an email. I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information about nutrition, exercise, science, and health. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage where current subscribers only can uh, send me short questions about anything pertaining to nutrition or exercise. Also, anything they might have read in uh, Applied Metabolics that they want to ask me about. That's only for current subscribers. So what else can I say? That's about it. Um, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. At this point in time, uh, that, that's actually redundant at this point in time. Now, that's the proper way to phrase it. Now, I don't currently have a dog. I don't have a dog, but I'm working on it. I'm going to get another dog soon. Unfortunately, I had a little setback recently. I was in the hospital for three to four weeks. I'm not at 100% yet. Uh, and uh, But as soon as I feel a little better, my first priority is to get an adopted dog because I know what they do for me, and they'll do the same for you. They're the best companions you could possibly ever get. Thank you for listening.